Cahar Rua O'Doherty was the last chieftain to rule Inishon before the plantation of Ulster. His story is the epitome of a turbulent time in Irish history and his actions may have led to the plantation of Ulster itself. I've come to Greenan Hill, which looks out to ancient O'Doherty land and their last great stronghold at Burt Castle, to begin my journey into the life and times of Sir Cahar, Irish chieftain and English knight. A devout Catholic, his very religion and culture placed him at odds with English counterparts and one figure in particular would set Cahar on the road to rebellion. Green and Fort looks down on the stage of the O'Doherty uprising and from this position the present day city of Derry, Londonderry on the banks of the River Foyle stand today in deference to that turbulent time. Here on Lifford Bridge I stand between what is now the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland looking towards the ancient boundary between the O'Doherty lands and English-held territory. Inheriting the chieftainship at the fragile age of 13, being knighted for his services to the Crown via Henry Dockra's recommendation, Cahar would come to know Londonderry in its infancy, as a settlement before its mighty walls were built. Dockra's successor, George Pollitt, destroyed Dockra's working relationship with Cahar in one blow. During an impassioned talk with Pollitt about the fate of the O'Doherty clan and its lands in Derry in early 1608, Pollitt struck the tearful 21-year-old in the face in full view of the public. This proved to Cahar that under the new regime, his counterparts, whether amicable or otherwise, viewed him as less than equal. Here in the Guildhall, a fine sword by Andrea Ferreira is reputed to be Cahar's own and it is on show currently in the plantation-themed display. On the night of April 18th, Cahar and 100 of his men seized Culmore Fort and their huge ammunition supply. The following day, Cahar attacks Derry, taking control of the settlement quickly, killing Pollitt in the process. After releasing civilian prisoners, Cahar unleashes his fury, burning Derry to the ground. Carrigan Dune, situated just beyond a small village called Kilmacrennan in County Donegal, is the inauguration site for the chieftains of Chirconnell, and would come to play a central role in Cahar's story and demise. Largely for their own reasons, other chieftains lend their support to Cahar in the secret hope that with his end, his substantial lands may become available to them. His rebellion would stretch for the next 11 weeks, not just contained within Donegal and Londonderry, but gaining support as far away as County Antrim. After the horrors of the Nine Years' War, Cahar was threatening to destabilise the entire region once again. The final chapter of Cahar's uprising would be played out, not in his native Inishon, but in Kilmacrennan. A poignant fact, considering that Cahar would become the last great Gaelic chieftain in Donegal. An army estimated at 1,000 strong marched on Kilmacrennan between the rivers Lurgy and Lennon on the 4th of July 1608. Densely wooded landscape would mean English cavalry could not engage and would allow Irish Cairn to easily scout the combined English and Irish force drawn against Cahar. Heavily armed Galloglass soldiers from Minishone began moving through the wooded and rocky terrain scouting the English position. These hardened soldiers were largely equipped with swords, axes, shields and bows, typical of an earlier style of warfare. And while weapons from Culmore Fort were likely present, many of these men preferred the sword to the gun. Once the English position was established, Cahar's forces drew up in preparation. Archers and gunmen on both sides prepared for the opening volleys. Historical accounts talk of combat lasting only 30 minutes. Fierce skirmishing occurred with losses on both sides. Then suddenly the Irish lines began to break and recede. Something pivotal had happened. All we can be sure of for certain is that Carol Doherty 
in Meta's End at the Battle of Kilmacrenan. It's said that he took a musket ball to the head during the battle, after which time most of his forces scattered to the nearby woods. Now, some of his men were besieged on Tory Island for a while, but where it can be assumed that many of them just lost faith in the cause and ended up moving slowly back to their own territories again. with Mary Rose and coffee time. Uh, we're very lucky to get it. Uh, a cup of tea and coffee here today because it's freezing outside. And, uh, Mary Rose, I just wanted to ask you, uh, did you ever hear before we landed on your doorstep anything about Cabaret O'Doherty or the rebellion or, or any of the other major histories that happened here? I didn't hear anything. I didn't know there was a battle or um, right. like you would know that of course there must, things must have happened all around the area. Yeah. But not specifically the Camp Crenna Battle, no, I didn't hear about it. Yeah. Uh, you've been living here for quite some time. You run Coffee Time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we were open about a year and we lived here about five years. Yeah. 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 So we would definitely be uh, always love to hear stories about the area where things have happened or, mm. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Haven't heard anything about this. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a most bit of a revelation because it, it puts, it's one of those pieces of history that puts Kilmer Crown on the map when it comes to the importance, its importance within national history as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I think um, for ourselves on a, on a wee process of discovery that we're doing for this video, it's, uh, it's great to, to meet folks and to spread the information around the city as well. So, you know, it will do. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, That's great. Thank, thank you. you. All right. What I take away from my conversation with Mary Rose uh, is that most people living on the ground in any community in Ireland are largely unaware of the history that takes place around them, and while they may not have a general interest in history, that depth and wealth of knowledge uh, isn't normally available to most people. Uh, particularly the story of Cahar O'Doherty, which is, is, is an amazing story. It's a, it's a story of rebellion and strife in a, in a time when this man's very uh, cultural existence was on the line. And for that to have culminated so dramatically in an area like Kilmacrenan, is, uh, uh, and for that not to be known or remembered, I think really shines a light on where a lot of our Irish history has wound up. And it seems to have wound up in... Uh, a small box somewhere in a museum, and not within the hands of the people. The minstrel boy to the war has gone, in the ranks of death you will find him. His father's sword he has girded on, and his wild harp slung behind him. Land of song, said the warrior bard, though all the world betray thee, one sword at least thy right shall guard, one faithful harp shall praise thee. The minstrel fell, but the foreman's chain could not bring his proud soul under. The harp he loved never spoke again, for he tore its cords asunder, and said, No chains shall sully thee, thy soul of love and bravery. Thy songs were made for the pure and free. They shall never sound in slavery.